Mike the Ref Maloney, Big Bad Boris on the call here tonight. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let the Super Kick Party! Yeah, pay the money for that. No one. And of course, you gotta get the coffins in. Hey, yo, 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 and away we go. Happy Wednesday night to one and all here, and welcome to the AEW Dynamite Sidecast, I hope, uh, here on the uh, Backbreaker Backbreaker Video YouTube channel and the uh, Mike the Ref Twitch channel. Jesus, criminy. Uh, yeah, folks, I'm just trying to, you know, trying to make sure that I incorporate both, because I think we might eventually start uh, multi-streaming here across both platforms just to see if we can get a little bit more buzz and a little more conversation going on here. Not that I don't appreciate each and every one of you, which I always do. Just, you know, having the having the YouTubers come over and say hello is always a good thing as well. So, But, you know, what? speaking of news, we got so much news to talk about today. We're going to have to get into a bunch of it during the show. Hey, Jay Quick, how you doing? Like... First of all, right now, apparently, Tony Khan's very happy with the Dallas partnership that they're having, which I think we'll discuss it a little bit more on Saturday uh, during uh, Collision, because it seems like, you know, that's going to be the last show that's going to be there before they head off to England for two shows broadcast Monday and Saturday, or Wednesday and Saturday, sorry. And then um, we're also hearing that... Uh, there's potential now for a show to go to Dallas as well as Australia. There are like three or four different venues vying for uh, a show in uh, in Australia, which I think is a big win for AEW. Like, yes, I know they're following the foot. I don't give a crap if they're following the footsteps of WWE. They're going to some of the biggest markets in the world. And just hearing that stuff coming down, just such great news. This big announcement that Tony Khan's supposed to have. Yeah, there's there's like four or five different announcements that are supposed to be coming out. I'm interested to see how the all-in documentary is that comes out on Monday. Because they have a... Apparently, they're going to have a series about the makings of different shows coming up starting on Monday here. Uh. One thing I want to check out tomorrow, hope tomorrow morning, hopefully I didn't get a chance to check to today. Wrestle Talk had a chance to sit down with uh, Maxwell and Jacob Freeman in their studio for a forty-five minute conversation. And the one note that I saw that somebody clipped, uh, they had talked about the attendance at Wembley. The original TK announcement was correct. There were some British British institutions which uh, made different claims for different numbers which were picked up by certain other wrestling organizations, as MJF put it, and fed to certain media outlets, which he was staring both at uh, the two wrestle talk guys doing it there, which I just love. And all of a sudden, they're like, yeah, no, it was the right number. Because Will Ospreay almost had to get that tattoo removed that he got on there. So, no, if that's one of the clips that I see in there, I want to see what the rest of them are. And I want to see a lot of the interesting stuff that's going to be coming up on there. And then on top of that, you got the, got the news that it's pretty much a done deal that Penta and Phoenix are leaving. Penta is trying to backtrack on anything that's said about it because, well, if they screw up and talk too much about it, there is a potential for Tony Khan to be a dick and add time on to Phoenix's contract for injury, right? From what we hear, there might be a potential for the Lucha Brothers to show up at Bad Blood in uh, early October down in Atlanta. It's a very important place for AEW because that's where they uh, they filmed uh, 
their COVID tapings. So, hey, Ed, how's it going? Sorry I ducked out on the second half of the show last night just because... Oh. When, when you didn't get a chance to see AEW in, uh, or see NXT live, I, I was just starting to troll a little bit too much, so I thought I'd, I'd duck out. Just leave you on a lurk while I'm doing some other work. They're opening... All right. AEW always says that the opening of the show... Like, everybody's talking about the opening of the show being the most important spot. Well, let's go. Mercedes versus Sheeta right off the bat here. Sorry, I had to set a quick note out because, you know, certain people want to see this match and nobody ever expects the women's match to open up the show, right? Well, this is pretty awesome here. They're going to have this for the first match. We'll have the Acclaim versus the Bucks as the uh, main event, I'm guessing, if that's the case. We're also going to get Hangman Page versus Jay Lethal tonight, which hopefully is going to set up... Uh, Set up the three-way or else, hell, even if the Acclaim win, we could end up with a Acclaim versus, yeah, the triple threat. That's what most of us are thinking of what's going to happen here, but. This is actually going to be a real test tonight. Like, not just the contest, don't get me wrong here, but also the fact that they're putting the women in the first spot, which is always usually the big spot of the night. If they can pull the similar numbers. Oh, the, the OC triple threat match for the spot, the number one spot in the gauntlet. With uh, Kyle, Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong, and Orange Cassidy. That is going to be an insane matchup. That's going to be so much fun. Just for the fact that, you know, those three know each other so well right now. I love how Sheeta faces Baker, loses in a tight match, gets another win, now gets a title shot. The logic isn't completely by me here, but it's still, you know, I know some people might consider it a bit of a stretch, but I still think it's okay with the fact that, you know, Sheeta's right on that level. Do we see Baker interfere in this match? Well, I don't think she'll interfere in the match. I think she'll interfere after the match. But yeah, between all this going on, there's now uh, not confirmation, but pretty damn close that we possibly might be seeing Michael Oku signing with AEW here, as well as Amira. Apparently, talk, talks went back as far back as the uh, Oku uh, Osprey match. That's why Tony was there to get a feel about what was going on and whatnot. It very well could be the Casino Battle Royal or the Casino Gauntlet match might be the debut of Michael Oku here in AEW, along with a few other people. Ricky Che, Bobby Lashley, MVP, Shelton Benjamin. Let's just... And I'm sure they're probably going to bring in, a, bring in a lot of British people as well on that. Because, you know, let's just fill it. Dijak? No. Um, under the category of I'd love to see it, but Dijak's got his indie booking still. I actually got the privilege of seeing him last week. And uh, he basically said he has all his dates filled for 2023. Or sorry, 2024. Outside of four? 
And a lot of them are like Thursday nights kind of thing, so... They're odd booking days to book, so... Yeah, no, I'm... Really great seeing Dijak there. If, if you guys weren't around on Saturday, I uh, got a chance to go to the Top Talent Show here in Edmonton. If you guys get a chance, and I know they'll... Oh, by the way. The uh, Triller deal coming up for, double, for the double pay-per-view... All in and all out. If you have the opportunity and you have a Roku TV, do it through the Roku app. Do it through the app on the TV. It is so weird. Andre C pointed this out to me here earlier. And and this happened to me during the three pack package uh, that show that showed up before. Went with the uh, Forbidden Door all. Forbidden Door, Double or Nothing, and Revolution Triple Threat Package. There are like three different prices depending on where you sign up with the with the uh, Triller app. Because I know that I was looking on my phone app and it says a hundred bucks for the double pay per view. You go on the TV on the on the TV app, it says seventy. But this is Canadian dollars, so you know it's like ten bucks American, but. Somebody actually hit, oh, I think they hit a crowd noise button or else the mics were a little off, one or the other. Maple Leaf Wrestling returns in October, absolutely. Shout out to Scott Damore. Stefan not looking like an idiot for once. That's great. Uh, well, I, I don't want to blow. Oh, we got Wheeler and Swerve tonight. I forgot about that one. That, that, that could be our main event, or they could put the tag match as a main event. I think either way, it's going to be just... Oh, God. All right, Camille's being the distraction that should that she should be. I can see Brit Brit win the title and they move Mercedes to the big women's title. Um, I don't know. You you guys throw throwing your two cents what you think about it as well, but uh, in my opinion. They're almost looking at the T TBS title as more of the uh, show-off title. Where you have your flashier names towards it. You got your Britt Baker, your Mercedes Monet. There might even be a point where Tony Storm moves over to the TBS title. I think you use your AEW women's title as your real story-driven and work rate title more more than anything not saying these women can't work far from it but uh i honestly feel that they're making that sort of shift so that tbs wants that title shown off and if you get somebody like well mercedes here who's in the mandalorian who's been all over social media whoever who's been on uh Who's been in the other product? Let's just face it. Well, according to Bischoff, a lot of things happen. Congratulations to Rampage for making more matches than Thunder. Next February is going to be absolutely glorious. I, I will straight up say this right now. It, as far as I'm concerned, Eric Bischoff, it must be time when the Legends deal is starting to come up. Because if he's going to start slandering AEW again and their wrestlers, you know, sayings, I, I hate to say it, but it smells like a rat, walks like a rat, talks like a rat. Well, it's not a goose. Far from it, a goose is a very noble bird.
but I'm really amazed that they're actually using this match on on national TV to start up, but I really shouldn't be surprised. Just for the fact that it is Mercedes and Sheeta, it's one of those matches you could save for a pay-per-view easily, but the thing is, this roster is so competitive. You can use a match like this here and then bring it back later. Shades of Triple H with that jumping knee. <laughs> Thought they were going to start with a three-way. That makes sense because Orange Cassidy is usually the guy that opens things up, but that's why I got a feeling that we might get the tag titles as the main tonight. Unless they want to do Yuta and... Uh, they'll, they'll probably do Swerve and Yuta at the top of the second hour like they... They've been doing the last few weeks here. Putting Swerve right at the top of the hour. Just so when people are... I know some people actually still have TV channels when they're channel surfing. They'll find... Um, they'll find Mercedes as... Uh, or they'll find Swerve as that guy to get at the top of the hour. Just like this match here. Like A lot of people see Mercedes there. Hopefully they keep him around with this. And they're going to get 20 minutes out of this. They're already 10 minutes in. And we haven't even hit the double down spot yet. And this crowd is into it. I love it. I love every second of this. Oh, here we go. She loves Eddie Guerrero so much, and she... Oh, she to block. Falcon Arrow, let's go. Now, here comes Britt. This is where Britt will come in. Okay, never mind. I like how Tony Khan was like announcements could be anytime, you never know when. And here's the interference spot. Oh, God. That was a boot. All right. Well, that's how you end it. All right. They got, five, they got 10 minutes. Sorry. It's, it's 13 after right now. So give it 12 minutes, whatever. This might be the moment where you see Jamie Hayter tonight. <laughs> you got to love it when that title just literally naturally just rolls down the arm. So the fact she didn't lose it. There we go. Ms. DMD in the house. And Camille's trying. <laughs> oh. And that's some guy in the crowd, so she gets sued. And Brick came through the timers. Little 
Camille can't get her out. <laughs> Tried to pull her by the heel, just couldn't do it. Oh, it's great. And Britt does not have to say a word. So yeah, for the record, guys, we will be here for AEW All In. I'll be firing up stream probably right around uh, 11.30 Eastern or 9.30 Mountain, somewhere around there. Because we're going to get like three, three pre-show matches, right? All three guests that I have booked... Might not be here on at the same time, but you know what? As they come in, we'll, we'll add them in, and we're going to have a ton of fun here. It's the first time I'm going to have multiple people on stream here. Confirmed so far. Uh, so far. Uh, Kayla, basically three-quarters of the people that we've already had here. I just wanted to see how everybody get here. Basically for the end of the year kind of thing, right? So we're going to get... Uh, oh. Jay Lee, we're going to get Kayla J. We're McG's going to be here as well, as well as Zodiac. We're all going to be piling in. Hey, Zodiac, how you doing? And Eggman just... Hangman just eat, eat crap and let's go. It, it's it's okay, Chris. I'm wearing the shirt tonight, so just so you know. Well, we're not even gonna get a uh, introduction for either one of these guys. Let's just get firing up. Well, nobody needs music. We'll just get wrestling. Let's go. Screw it. Who needs introductions? Let's go. Jesus. Turner, get that jacket out of there. Atta boy. Much better, Zoe. I got a boy. Let's just give you a... Hope everybody's doing well tonight. Oh my God, he's going for a fourth. You going for another one? Oh my, let's go. Five splashes, five. <laughs> Hangman, don't put your hands on Renee. Someone might pay you a visit, Hangman. Right now, the story with Hangman is very simple. He needs to screw Swerve. And... He's going to do it by any means necessary. You left your house and walked into mine. Zodiac just throwing it right back in here with a 29 month sub. Thank you. Thank you for your Players Club membership. One of these days, we're going to have to get like a plaque on the wall or something for you here. So, somewhere in the arena back here, we'll have to get a plaque up on the wall just, you know, celebrating the uh, two-year club or... <laughs> Telling the timekeeper to get the hell out of the way. That's smart. No, but seriously, Zodiac, thank you for your uh, for your sub. Thank you for all your help. Thank, th thank you for being around. I know you're going to be around uh, for, for All In. It's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. Everything's just flying all over the place here. Ugh. Well, it hasn't felt like 20 minutes so far. It's just been breezing here. So, um, one of the latest talks that they've had, and it makes a lot of sense, is we are going to get Hangman and uh, Swerve, but it's going to be in Chicago because they got another pay per view in two weeks later, right? It almost makes sense to do it there. Even though we got that casino gauntlet for a world title shot, we got Darby waiting at Grand Slam. Whether Swerve has the title or not, which 
I think we talked about one of the biggest misnomers here in AEW is when they used the uh, never going to wrestle again stipulation for Danielson. I don't think he gives it up that quickly. So you just can't see him giving up the giving up his career like that. So I, I think it's one of the biggest misses they did in AEW. You want to have a plausible deniability and they, they aren't going to have one at this time, but it's still going to be a great match. Don't get me wrong. But it would make sense to have Hangman and almost to the point where you get Hangman out there to sort of screw swerve here at this point. And, and there are many ways that they may be building up uh, to possibly having MGF and Osprey main event the show. I know it's hard to believe, but might be a chance of it. KJ! How the heck are you doing tonight? I'm, I'm sorry that you're going to have to go back from the start tonight, which unfortunately, if you're watching this on TSN, you're going to have to wait till midnight Eastern to get a VOD of this. Unless you want to go on the app and check things out. But uh, Mercedes uh, defeated Hikaru Shida, thanks to Camille. Brick came out through the crowd. Yeah, I, people in chat, if you were wondering what, what I was texting at the beginning of the show, it was actually the KJ to let her know Mercedes was on. But uh, yeah, they give him about 12 minutes and end up being a fun match. And then they really just went straight to... Straight to Hangman and Lethal, like brawl in the back to to action in the ring right now. So no fooling around. It it's gonna be chaotic. There's gonna be a lot of stuff going on here. Another thing I want to see tonight was it a good match? It was actually a very good match right till the end. It was very predictable near the end. With, uh, you know, Camille out there as the interference spot. And even the post, how it worked out. It was actually really smart how it was done. The fact that Britt Baker was the imaginary third, third spot that came in there. It'll make more sense if you actually see it. But yeah, uh, Zodiac, uh, Kayla, I'll be in touch with you here in the next few days. We'll get everything sorted out as to what time I'll be on and whatnot. And you guys, we, when we have th at least three guests, we might have a fourth one. I haven't checked yet. Um, I don't mind if one person, one person ducks out, another one comes on. We could be all over the place with our guests here. I'm hoping to have the new layout done by then, so hopefully we can uh, have a little bit of fun with that. I think this layout's going to be pretty much the same, but... I've been working on... Uh, ba basically, I've been trying to catch up on videos, so haven't had much of a chance to do any uh, real setup, so... Do we think Jared interfere? Jared will not interfere in this match. He has the, uh, I think he has that integrity that he isn't going to do it. He sure as hell will show up after the match. Yeah, I, I do think we get Hangman Jared. If we don't get it, uh, I didn't even think Lethal kicked out. Oh, he did kick out. Okay. Uh-oh. Hangman's bleeding. You made me bleed my own blood. Shout out to anybody that gets that reference. But, uh... So, yeah, they're doing Cardiff next Wednesday. They're doing a double taping of Collision and... 
Collision and Dynamite. I think they're doing a extra. Well, Hangman will be sued for Moxley's gimmick. Ah, I think everybody bleeds. I think Hangman forgot to kick out on time there. But now that he hits his lethal combination. Oh, Cardiff will be rocking it. It's a little disappointing though. I, I'm not afraid to say it. There is some disappointing stuff at AEW. The fact that they only booked like a 4,500 seat arena. When you have a 50,000 seat show coming up on this like five days ahead of time from that. He needs some milk in the background. Yeah, a lot of people forget Lethal is a former Ring of Honor World Champion. Right into the eyes, into a small... Oh. You had to turn over a little bit more to get that pin in. That was hilarious. Oh, God. This is a Logan Paul Lariat. Let's go. I'll do that to myself for that one. I think there might have been more BS involved there, but... I think Lethal might be having some trouble right now. And the guys that cost Lethal the ROH title, the Kurt Tag Chaps, yeah. I want to see Jarrett just blitz him right now. Yeah, he came out in full Hogan gimmick. So th this is why we're not getting MJF or Osprey on on Dynamite or Collision this week is because they're doing doing promotion out in uh, England, right? Yeah, that title's going back to the international. I'll almost guarantee it. The, the fact that he's made it more personal than ever, I think, is more of an advantage. Because he showed... He, he showed that, you know, the one time that Osprey showed emotion in a match... He actually lost, and that was the that was the match against Swerve, right? I love the fact that there's three different sets of videos here, three different promotions being showed during these videos. These, this production has really stepped up. Yeah, like, and also the fact that he has said he's going to hit that Tiger driver is going to be really helpful as well. They got money, the hype, the promotion better step up. Yeah, like. 
AEW is always the, their biggest problem I find has always been marketing. It's not the matches, it's not the storytelling, it's just letting people know that they actually exist outside of the people that want to know. Like we go out of our way to see AEW. You got to find those people that aren't going out of their way, but they're going to be easily be able to find it. Like a couple posts on a local radio station is not going to be enough to get you to get people to get out to a show, right? Oh my. Uh, I do like the fact that Osprey came out and took that t title out of the trash right away. That's why I think they brought Mercedes in to try to bring more fans. See, like, Mercedes is a key example of what I'm talking about here. Like, she was at the Celtics game five when they clinched. She was, uh, she's always at the, uh, she enjoys the Red Sox. If there's a big social event, she will be there. She can take those titles to Hollywood and just have them on the set when she's, uh, talking, talking Mandalorian, right? And yeah, well, KJ, the reason you came in first time was literally to watch the uh, Mercedes debut. So yeah, it, I, I think the fact that we're gonna get a couple, I got a feeling we're gonna get at least one or two big announcements at all in, namely in that casino battle or the casino gauntlet match. And I would be shocked if one of those names is not Bobby Lashley. Because of the name value, because of the recognition, and a lot of people don't even realize he's gone from the company already. And I mean the casuals, right? Hey, Vic. How you doing tonight? Hope you got a chance to catch the early part of Dynamite tonight. Because unfortunately, that's the, that's the uh, women's match, if you didn't see it already. Because Mercedes and Hikaru got the, got the early spot tonight. I'm doing good. Been doing a lot of, uh, well, I got a lot of videos coming up here. We got another f six videos this week coming up on the uh, wrestling YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed over there, videos come out at, uh, didn't feel the Brit segment. I think the pacing's just a little off on it, to be honest. I wouldn't have minded if she would have came out a little bit sooner, but the fact that they were, cheering her as she's coming in and Mercedes don't clue in her head that she needs to turn around because the crowd's sort of reacting to it. I, I can see where you're coming with on that. So I, I don't mind how they did it. It's just the pacing of how they did it. Once again, it's just those finer details that AEW needs to clean up for their storylines here, right? Like realistically, you get Brit in a black hoodie coming up the, coming up the way, and you don't see her until she takes the hoodie off, at the edge of the ape at the edge of the uh, apron, and as she's getting into the ring, that's when uh, the face off happens. Because I'll tell you right now, if I turn around and see Britt Baker putting a glove on outside the ring, and I'm Mercedes, I better qualify that last part. Uh, I am going in, and I am not waiting for her to get in the ring. I am Kendo sticking the hell out of her. 16 ways from sideways. The only reason I would give her anything is the fact that she's going to have to pay that fan who Camille brought over the ro over the uh, barricade to beat the living crap out of. She's going to have to uh, pay out that guy big time. That's like uh, at an indie show when somebody gets hit. Funny thing. I was talking about the top talent show earlier tonight. 
uh, that we had last week here with Donovan Dijak. After the match, Dijak came in. He, he lost due to shenanigans to a guy that currently holds their version of the Money in the Bank briefcase. So after the match, you know, you got to get your heat back. So Dijak comes in, choke slams him, choke slams the manager, uh, feast your eyes, all that stuff, and then grabs the briefcase and just literally punts it. Uh, yeah. Flying object into the crowd that's not exactly expecting it. Guess what happens? It was one of those <laughs> moments. Immediately he goes out there and, oh no, literally this, this old lady's sitting here like this and all of a sudden the guy next to her just literally, <laughs> basically forearms it out of the way as a save. Dijak immediately comes down and, you know, does the whole apology thing. Everybody cheers for her. Oh, it, it was actually... Oh. Thank you for bringing this storyline up. All right, this is the ultimate yay boo moment here. Pac does not get his one-on-one -on -one match at Wembley, but he's got the first announced match for Chicago. Well, Pac, show up every week and you'll get your shot. I will give you that, but at the same time, Dar Darby's just been going ape crazy the last few weeks here. And that actually was a really good match between Hologram and Hologram and Darby and the Perfect Athletes. Hey, Pac, where's your butt? Yeah, well. As we bring things together, like behind the curtain, we know exactly why he's not getting a match at Wembley. It's because they're not putting the, the Lucha Brothers on the card, period. If they're that content about leaving, he's just going to ice them until they're gone. <laughs> Who the fuck is Jungle Boy Jack Perry? I'll never forget the time he got stranded in Canada. I'll get to that story here in a sec, because it's actually pretty funny. So, I might as well get... Now, this is all speculation on a lot of parts, but... Based on the amount of uh, facts and figures that have been brought up, about this promotion it makes a lot of sense there were wrestlers that came up here for a promotion called heart legacy wrestling which by the way does not have any correlation to the heart family let's just call that straight right there 
It's somebody who basically bought a name and decided they wanted to run. Uh, brought in these luchadors. Brought in Jack Perry for some stuff. And for some reason, some of these guys' passports disappeared. And with the passports disappearing, you can't get across the border. So, oh, your passport will show up after you work a couple more weeks. What the hell is that? Oh, and there's Perry. I, I love how Perry dove in the same way that Darby always pulls in. Just a fearless dive with no regard for anybody else. But yeah, we're we're looking. For, <laughs> this match here will be a lot of fun. It will be crazy. I assume they're going to use real glass in the uh, match. Because it. I, I'd assume that uh, real glass is going to be just a point that's going to be made. Uh, here we go. And you can see Team Jared on the other side, so this looks like a pre-tape. AEW not on T. The program guide screwed up. The program guide screwed up. It does say overtime right now, but it is actually AEW. Darby use a flamethrower. I'll blow a whistle on that. Yeah, no, uh, today we're wearing the... Uh, I actually mentioned it as you logged out, logged in again. So, yeah, we're wearing... Tonight's shirt is the Retro Hangover Classic Wii U shirt. No, originally I thought the same thing. I was firing up the app to get ready to watch it on there, which... And th then I looked on the website and it said it's on TSN too, so... Ah, uh, you gotta look... So these Virginia... Wow! So randomly, right before the commercial break, we're we're announcing a coffin match. So it's uh, Jack Perry versus Sting in a coffin match. That checks out. I would say that checks out pretty smart. As they're doing their full commercial, we're gonna run our full commercial here, just because it's gonna come up here right away anyway. So let's pop that in here. Sting, nah, you, you, I, I don't think you have Sting show up here. You gotta have people realize that things have moved on, right? Like, Sting's no longer with AEW. Or Sting's no longer wrestling. I think there's gonna be enough high points in the match. Oh, You idiot. I will say this to myself. Thank you guys for correcting me there. Cause like, yeah, that was, I just threw. You idiot. Yeah. Perry versus Sting Jr. Is that better? Good thing I'm not on color commentary tonight. Cause that was a bit of a thrower there, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's acceptable. Sting Jr. is acceptable. All right, good. We got... We'll, we'll take that. Um, I'll have to remember that next time I fub that up. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it's... I'm glad they're doing a little variety on that match because we got Jericho and Hook coming up, which is probably going to be your hardcore match. Making this a coffin match to be a little bit different compared to the other ones sort of makes it feel a little bit better, a little bit more... Reasonable, I would say is the best way to put it. Just makes it make more sense, right? So. 
but yeah, with with everything going on, once again, everybody, welcome for coming in, uh, joining us here tonight. We're having a lot of fun. We were talking early about a bunch of the stories that have gone down this week. What do you guys think of AEW potentially going down to Australia? I know there's a lot of people that are excited about it coming up here. And the fact that four different stadiums are in the basically in the running for it to be, to happen. I think it's very ambitious. You know what? Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Oi, oi, oi. I, uh, that's what I say about that. Oi, oi, oi. There you go, Zoyak. It's just for you. Um, it is ambitious. I do think that there is an appetite for it. I think if they move, like, if they start doing the big four in different locales like that internationally. Oh, everybody, Mariah May's hot. Mariah May. Shh. I will get to that in a sec there, Kayla. They actually are already. No, don't burn the gear. Sell it on eBay. You know how much money you'd make off that? You know how much money they would have made off that? I, I love this promo here. You notice the quality of the promos have just shot up here in the last in the last few weeks. Like these segment promos, not just the. Ah, oh, there's Mina. She can make money off her bath while she doesn't care about the gears she burned. She sound that's the Miss Elizabeth that is the Miss Elizabeth promo. WrestleMania five. Sorry. Somebody go back and check that, because I'm pretty damn close. That's exactly maybe not word for word, but maybe ninety five percent of it is the is the Macho Man Hogan promo that Miss Elizabeth gave before she went out there. So, here comes the triple threat. Let me get to the questions before we get too far behind here. I think it's a good bet. You see, never see major promotions go, go there, wonder if it's part of Mr. Ripley's contract. Very well, it could have been one thing that they brought up, and the fact that the House of Black could be a, a featured team there. On that show and Kayla the uh, essentially they've announced a Japanese uh, forbidden door of course I'd have to look up the name again chat you can help me out with that it is January 5th at the Tokyo Dome it's gonna feature the same same promotions that were at um, at forbidden door CMLL AW 
and New Japan. And who knows, maybe some more. Nigel don't want you to sell the outfit. Eh, fair, that's true. And yeah, but... And once again, we're talking about... Uh, I'll quickly look it up here myself here with this. Wrestle Dynasty, that's what it's called. It's going to be January uh, January 5th, 2025 from the Tokyo Dome in Tokyo, Japan. Okay, no complaints here. Do the audio. <laughs> I, I will. We're going to be growing up. And the other thing they... And the reports that have been coming out in terms of another bigger show, the day after Wrestle Kingdom, exactly. It, it used to be known as uh, New Year's Dash, I believe, by New Japan. It's just been rebranded now. So, they, basically, basically, they did it to set up the new feuds. That's what that New Year's Dash is for. They can... They can hold off a week on that. They can let fans breathe a little bit. But yeah, the winner of this match gets the number one shot at the uh, Casino Gauntlet, which it actually makes sense to have these guys fight for the number one spot because the number one, one and two spots are the most important, right? Like in a Royal Rumble, you want to get 30. Anytime there's like a gauntlet type match, you normally want to get 30. But in this one, you need to get number one. You need to be in a position where if you could score that pinfall right away, you don't even have to worry about the rest of the match. Yeah, I'm I'm with uh, Tony there. I, I actually feel that three ways are more dangerous than four ways in terms of wrestling matches. Because there's always that odd one out, right? And that was one of the biggest faults with uh, WWE when they were doing their their ladder matches, right? They'd always have an odd number of people in there. So then as you're doing your prediction, you just go through it and just boom, 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 boom. These guys have a rivalry. These guys have a rivalry. These this is the only guy that's left out. He's winning it, and that's usually what happened. Yeah, and that's exactly it, Jay Quick. Uh, going back to the last cas Casino Gauntlet match, Roddy claimed that he was the next one to come out, but he didn't get a chance to because Osprey won won the pinfall there. So, which eventually led to his match against uh, Swerve at Forbidden Door. So, yeah, that's gonna. I, I like these little tiny bits of storytelling. It's a little different than what you see normally, and it just makes things a lot better. And I like a little different. I know this isn't everybody's cup of tea for a lot of it, because a lot of it you do have to pay attention to the finer details while you're in there. And there is also a lot of stuff that does come up on social media. Like, for example, you wouldn't have pictured lethal and uh hangman having that match tonight unless you got a chance to see the video after the show last week which they replayed here but if you're trying to figure out why this match mattered I i'm just glad that they did play the video again here tonight because that's one bad habit that AEW got into that the fact that they thought everybody just saw everything that came out online Well, yeah, some of the other news that we were talking about there. Uh, MJF actually, well, as much as you can take it, he was actually burning a, 
burning the interviewer that he had at the same time. So I think it'd probably be accurate. Uh, MJF did confirm that last year's total at uh, All In, the attendance figure that was announced was the true right one. And basically what MJF said is British media outlets, certain ones that didn't like appre appreciate AEW, we're coming up with different numbers that uh, other wrestling promotions, which MJF would not name, uh, picked up, fed to uh, fed to social media, and other reporters reported it. So Will Ospreay does not have to get his tattoo removed for having an incorrect number on there. I, I just love watching interviewers squirm because he's exactly talking about it, right? And he said the whole thing with Brit was blown out of proportion. Of course it was. How many clicks did it get? It's like what I told you guys when uh, you asked me about it. I said, I can't really comment about it until we find out exactly what the reason was that it happened. If it was something bad, then... But if it was... From... The most I can surmise right now is the fact that Brit wasn't happy that that they got an hour and the women are getting enough, which A, MJF and Osprey are selling that all in pay-per-view and B, Brit's right. They aren't getting enough time. It's a catch-22 on both ends, right? So and I could see MJF being, being pissed off because he spent an hour out there and all he's getting is shit for spending too much time out there. After having a match like he did. We're never really going to know the truth what happened there. So I think pretty much it should be a dead issue at this point. In my opinion, you have the one-hour matches on pay-per-view. Yeah, like... They've already had that. I, I think I think they could have accomplished the same thing with a half hour time limit. But at the same time, like it was a great match. Like many people were calling it one of the greatest matches in AEW of all time. Or at least on Dynamite. I am so looking forward to that mixed tag. A Boston Crab and an, a, a Boston Crab and a New Hampshire Crab. What the hell is that? Oh, great. Everybody's getting into a geography lesson here on the commentary desk. Always great. Jesus. Weird transition there, yeah. Waiting for Stokely to get... To say I got a prior commitment. That He's already said that. He's actually messaged Tony Khan already about it. And the best part is uh, Statlander's been... Stanlander and Stokely have actually been really have been really uh, pushing the social media on this match like they showed a uh, a picture of a FaceTime from uh, Statlander and Stokely saying dude it's 630 get your ass up it's time to train He was already hurt. What are you talking about? He hurt himself. You just want crab? Ooh, yum. Yeah, I forgot to pull anything out for supper tonight, so I ended up uh, having a bunch of leftovers prior to... I usually have supper around uh, 
three o'clock here, which I know is really early, but I do it before I stream. Sort of a routine I got into when I did commentary. I'll have a little snack after I'm done while the video's rendering. Oh, speak of the devils. We were talking about him earlier for the reason that Lethal lost the title. Basically on grandparent time there, true enough. So come to Korean barbecue yourself tonight? Yeah. I, I didn't want to order in. I always, when I do commentary, I try to have something to eat before, like, usually it's about three hours before I actually go live. Because I'll make sure that an hour before I go live, I make sure I clean, as gross as it sounds, I'll try and clean myself out. Orange literally had a seat to get out of that. Kyle went for a dive. He missed and all of a sudden it ends up with a backbreaker. Okay. Welcome to our second. Wow. Our second segment already on this. And it's already the top of the second hour. We are really flying through tonight. But yeah, another one of the, like talking about big news and basically we can talk about the, the battle Royal here. I think we're going to get some bit chat, throw out some names. I know we were talking about this off the top of the show before everybody started f piling in here. Name some big names you expect to see in that casino battle Royal. Or the Casino Gauntlet match. Sorry, I gotta get those... I gotta get that straightened out because he's always had a Battle Royal there. Now it's a Gauntlet. Because I think he's gonna have quite a few names in there. Uh, one of the more common ones I've heard is the fact that... It, it appears that Michael Oku, who you saw in the promo... Uh, saw in the promo there with uh, MJF and, uh, and Will Ospreay there at RevPro... I think he's going to be there. That's actually... I would love to see Tommy Billington come out at number two. Hometown boy gets the hometown pop. That would be flipping amazing. And yeah, he's signed. And apparently it is sort of the, uh, the full-time deal. He was just cleaning up some of the events that he had going already. But yeah, I could see him making his return at Wembley like that one's going to be insane I'm I'm still calling Bobby Lashley to win the match I, I think that's how you would put somebody like that right in the title picture right away either that or we're going to get Ricky Che that's going to be uh, doing that could see Adam Cole returning that actually could make a lot of sense he has just finished uh, moving, so he's got his stream set up going, so he's starting to get the house put together. So it makes sense that he could make it out for uh, for all any of his ankles okay. We also have to remember, too, that the MVP and Benjamin better be a package deal with Lashley, as said before. Absolutely. I do think... Here's the thing. Here's how I would book it, and here's a quick... How the ref would book. You bring Lashley into debut and win that. Uh... <laughs> Get him, wise bot. Get him. Oh, yeah. Love the viewer bots that are getting in here. Uh, how the ref would book really quick here. Lashley wins the casino gauntlet. He gets the title shot. He wins the title courtesy of the interference of the the pain the pain collection whatever you want to call it which is MVP she Shelton Benjamin and Ricky Che I, I think you get all three of them why not
Pain LLC. I'm going to give you a foghorn for that one. But one, one thing I will say, and I know it's a little disappointing as we're talking about it. It, it sucks that we are going to be losing... Uh, losing Penta and Ray, and Ray Phoenix to a to WWE right now. We're going to gain them on Raw and SmackDown, lose them on here. But we're not losing that much here, right? Like, there are so many wrestlers going to be coming in. There's so much good wrestling. Orange Punch Blunt. The pain collection is better than the group they named Shayna, Zo Sonya, and Zoe. I forget what they call that, but it's better than calling them the uh, submission sorority like they did. Uh oh. If you guys don't remember that, they originally called them the called the uh, Char what was it Charlotte. Charlotte Bailey and Soraya or Paige at the time. They call them the submission sorority to start. Then they finally realized that submissions. Um, Charlotte Becky and Paige. Yeah, exactly. And submission sorority sounds like a kink brothel. Well, to be perfectly honest, uh, Zodiac, the reason they had to stop is because there is a Website dedicated to something like that. Once again, uh oh. That's why they turned in the team PCB, which ended up sounding just as dumb, but it's one of those teams that really didn't need a name, just needed to attack. Oh god. Driver going into heartache. No, got a crop. There it is. You're getting the orange pop at uh at all in. <laughs> and I will use that for that one. No, great back and forth match. Three guys that knew each other very well. Very little, very little guesswork in here. All three of these guys will be in that match. It's just OC is going to be number one, right? Could you imagine Roddy being the first guy out again? Even if he isn't, he will be. If he's not there. The thing about O'Reilly is the fact that he could... He could win it. He could be the one eating the pin, too. No physicality. Ugh. Hey, Trade Nerd, how you doing? Good to see you back here again. Once again, we're watching a little AW Dynamite. Well, Zodiac, number one is the best position in the uh, ga Casino Gauntlet because if you can beat number two before number three comes out, you win. And nobody else comes out, and that's the end of it, right? So that that's why they consider it the best position. It, it's one of the rare times where number one is the best position in that. Usually don't watch AW. Usually, don't, well, you know what? No fault in that. Will not. 
but but I do recommend checking it out. That's what we're checking out here. So. The only thing that sucks about this is it's going to be on tape delay, so we're already going to know what happened. I'm not going to spoil myself, but... <laughs> Renee, the look on Renee's face was priceless as soon as he said the word. Claudio selling this match. <laughs> Go Claudio at a point. All right, uh, let commercial break there. I'm going to throw the ads up real quick here just because we're in the full commercial here. Uh, watched it at my uncle's house. They put a nail in the... Yeah, they've done some of that stuff. It's really... To I'm not going to say it's completely toned down. But the pay-per-views are a little crazy. The hardcore matches are a little crazy. But at the same time... AEW isn't as bad as people make it out to be or think they are. It has changed a lot. And I got a feeling it will change once they get the uh, the new contract in place. Which I got a feeling is probably going to be the biggest announcement they're going to have, right? They should place more of a gambling idea with it and have the winner of that match pick their spot. Like if you can't win number one, it starts building maybe five or six. I would almost say... Make it a wild card spot. Like, you can just call it that. And you get to come up whenever you want. Just literally say that as a stipulation. For the wild card spot, you, these three guys are fighting for whenever they can come out. But you don't have to pick it until you see the... Exactly. Like, I, I think we're on the same page here, Zodiac, but I, I literally think it should be money in the... Don't watch AEW, but... That's, Thanks. Nice. Congrats. I know we're all watching. We're all having a lot of fun. And I, I hope you're enjoying the figures. But yeah, we're all enjoying a great episode tonight. Like we've seen Mercedes Monet and uh, Hikaru Shida already. Yeah, which figures do you have? Uh, train nerd. In, because I know I got a ton of Funko Pops. I wish that uh, I wish AEW would get on the Funko Pop train. They're more on the uh, U2s train, and unfortunately, the U2s because of the delivery and all that, it just costs way too much to get one. I've gotten a few from Maximilian, but NJF, Brian Danielson, and one of the Young Bucks. That's cool. No, they're. Really nice, uh, really nice figures. Those those ones there, and that Brian Danielson one will probably be a, a collector's item here coming up next year once, once he retires here full time. Which I'm assuming is probably going to be in Tacoma, at Wrestle Dream. Think that would only make sense that you'd have it there. It was a pay per view exclusive, but a Target. Um, fair enough. It's nice to see Danielson finally take that second main event that he's that he's deserved. He, he's only had one before, and it wasn't for a title. This was such a great match until the very end, and it was so predictable to finish with Christian Cage just calling the 10 count. But I will say I, I do love Christian and Eternal Nick. All right, well, you enjoy Monster Jam. Well, like I said, we're watching Dynamite here tonight, so. Yeah, 
No, I appreciate you stick hopping in here tonight. Uh huh. I love the fact that Mama Wayne is still the recognized champion, apparently. Just watching Ray Renee's facials through this whole thing is just hilarious. the little WWE phrase in there, huh? <laughs> Tony Khan calling out Christian. I love it. Now we get the hook promo against Jericho, setting up that match. Which will be the popcorn break match of the night, probably. It's Pirate Hook! Arrgh, one eye. Got, gotta love wrestlers that are gonna, like, Malachi's got an eye patch. Looks just got a bandage, but I'm assuming he'll get an eye patch for for Wembley. All right, what's Hook got here? Interesting shirt there. Here you say, ugh, was terrifying. What? I want my And Christian, I won't insult Renee too much. Mr. Mox will pay a visit. Yeah. Well, Christian, I think, is probably the one guy in the roster who wouldn't be afraid of him. Oh, God. What the hell is that? Just throw that out there preemptively here. I'd assume this is going to be in Chicago. I don't know if they'll do it in Wembley, but we still got half a dozen matches to book for Wembley, so. I would. South of Forbo Norfolk Giant. You wanna fight, huh? You wanna fight? Well, Jer Jericho Jericho, leave the jacket on. Why is Jericho dressed as Big Bird? <laughs> I, I I I remember that one. Hi guys. Hey, 
All right, so we're getting an FTW at all Wembley. Oh, great. Here we go. I, I, you're, you're making this sound bad. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Brian Keith Brian Keith is more entertaining to me than than Jericho is, to be honest. Still a catchphrase. Still a catchphrase. All, always great when you can steal the catchphrases, right? Oh, they are doing uh, Strickland Yuta as the main, I guess. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm guessing that we're not going to get... You remind them, Bad Apple. You remind them. We'll be straight up to his ass. Straight up to his ass. Uh, I, I'm going to be happy when this feud's over. I'm going to be happy when that title's off Jericho. Please. Please. If it, if there's anything decent, Jericho will not hold a title in 2025. As we're going to have to start thinking about 2025. Can you imagine we're only four, three and a half months away from 2025? Right now, so... It, it, it's going to be a ton of fun of it with everything showing up here. Uh, I, can Jericho retire? I don't have a prey one, but, you know, maybe we get some magic out of it. No, I, I, I think Jericho will stop. I think Jericho has to figure stuff out. More importantly, Tony Khan's got to, you know, Tony Khan had a hell of a way of sending Sting out. There's got to be a way he could send Jericho out on decent terms here, right? Because I would like to see that happen. I, realistically, Grinch Jericho is one of the goats of wrestling, period. Take his pol political thoughts out of it. Take his, uh, his stooginess out of it. He still is one of the greatest all, of all time. The thing is that that list is huge of people we could call greatest of all time from so many different genres, so many different promotions. It's all over the place here. So let's not, let's not confuse each other with, uh, with the fact that, you know, we can only have X number of greatest of all times. There's, there's that level straight up. So. And I think Danielson's on that, on that tier. Hell, in many ways, you could consider Jeff Jarrett on that tier too, just for the way that he, the way he set up that third level, the way that it did. As much as we, I despise a lot of the way he booked himself. In terms of uh, 
in terms of a booker, nobody's going to be on top of McMahon, but you got to put Jared up there pretty high up after that. Just because TNA has lasted as long as it had with or without him. Especially with. But yeah, I, I can see a lot of things going on interesting here in the next couple weeks here. We got, what, 10 days, 11 days until... Uh, until Wembley and no thanks to Dixie well Dixie had a part to do with it like let as much as we try to say this guy didn't help or this guy hurt or hell Vince Russo even helped with some stuff right like a lot of people forget that Vince Russo did help with a couple gimmicks in WWF before they First time in four months to defend the titles, kids. That's one way to get the acclaimed over. No, no uh, fancy rhyme tonight. Just let's beat the living crap out of these guys. I I know this is the same thing they did with uh, Hangman and uh, Jay Lethal, but. As we call it, in many ways, uh, if you watched OSW reviews, you call it uh, a damn it, D-Lo moment. Hey, it's the part-time Bucks. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out which, which button I want to push here. I will be getting some, like I said, I will be getting some new sounds here. You know what, as much as we want to diss the Bucks, they are they are legitimately that good as long it, it's just how they're booked, right? And there's certain titles that they've just considered titles that they don't defend a whole lot, especially with heels. Oh goody, the Bucks ref is on tonight. Gotta love the old leg lariat there. Shades of Kenny Omega. I believe that's called the Kataro Crusher. Who's the main booker right now? TK. Tony is the essential booker of all three shows, of, or all five shows, essentially. He is starting to get a little bit of help, apparently, from a lot of agents. Not only agents, but guys like Brian Danielson, uh, Paul White's helping out a lot more with uh, Ring of Honor. I know he's got a kayfabe spot there, but yeah, all this is Tony Khan's booking right now. Yeah, he was, uh, Paul White was officially announced uh during the Arlington shows here to be the ROH uh, director of whatever you want to call that authority role, director of operations, whatever. By the way, if you guys do have the ROH uh, app tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern is the latest edition of uh, Ring of Honor TV. They are actually having for, well, the first time in forever on Ring of Honor TV, uh, Mark Briscoe taking on Johnny TV for the ROH world title. I know that's it's been a very big bone of contention to ha not have the champion on the Ring of Honor TV there, period. Same with the tag champs, which still haven't been there a whole lot.
as we're about to hit the picture in peak chore. So chat, what do you think? Do we get the three way or do we get, uh, or, or do we get a one-on-one -on -one match up here for the tag titles at Wembley? I got a, I got a weird feeling they're going to do a three way just cause they don't want to have the exact same match finish the exact same way two years in a row. Oh, gotta be a three way. Yeah. I, I, I think that makes the most sense. I, I will say though, having the Bucks keep the titles until Omega comes back might be a hell of a story. Because it almost makes sense that you have you have those uh, you have everybody on the elite have a title right now. Then Omega comes back to be the hero. Here's a question for you, chat. I I, I got a feeling the answer is no. Can he get some vault? Does Kenny show up? I I haven't heard anything. And it's the one thing I love about AEW. There's some wrestlers you just don't gear from. Like the most that Kenny Omega has been doing lately is his Twitch streams. He's like Adam Cole. All he's doing is playing video games. The only difference is he's played Street Fighter. And I swear to God, I do not want to face his Marisa anytime soon. I personally think yes, but maybe that's wishful. I think that would be a hell of a hell of a pop point if he showed up. But yeah, it's gonna be it, it's gonna be interesting to see how things settle down and show up here as we as we get into this and how the elite storyline develops, like. I, I got a feeling this elite storyline was going to be done already. Except. Oh, I missed the graphic there. Whoops. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a little tough to. Uh, It's a little tough when you're dealing with injuries and somebody specific like that into that injury angle. Because we just found out Kota Ibushi's back to 100%. Well, he, he's done some uh, grappling matches in Japan. So I think he's ready to go whenever. But diver diverticulitis is just such a hard thing to do. Good thing he's wearing black pants. <laughs> nice interference spot there. Uh, and this is how daddy ass gets kicked out. Dung bucks. Oh, shout out to the guy with a sign at ringside. Just got to get that extra boo in, right? Yeah, you can. He never hit him with a chair. Aren't you supposed to be ejected for doing something, not not doing something? They can work just fine. You know, it's amazing that the Bucks are the ones that they want to slow down the pace here. Good old back rake. Gotta, gotta love the old school back rake here. Uh, 
the final count now they've added more to the graphic last week it was just title versus career now it's called the final countdown so you know europe's being played at wembley could you imagine if you're is europe still alive if they were could you imagine them wanting to maybe play at wembley oh you son of a gun What bunch of scoundrels right there. I love the fact that paper is like a harmful, harmful object. And once again, a good old back rake right, to keep things going here. I love it. Nicholas Owen. Oh my goodness. Nice to hit your own brother in the face, right? And of course, here comes Bones with the hot tag. Let's see what kind of sauce it is. Well, I would say like a hot ketchup, maybe. Because I don't know if you want to call it, you know, anything hotter than that, because, well, frankly, you got cut off real quick there. Yeah, exactly. Like, T Taz has it bang on here. Like, he he's, he's one of those that just, he can't stand them personally, but... The, the kind of athletes that the Bucks are, like, you want to talk about tag team wrestling excellence? Like, let's face it, the Bucks are it. AEW has the potential to have an absolute stellar tag division if they actually work at it. Like, on Friday, we're getting Top Flight versus MXM Collection. That's going to be a, that's going to be a fun match. And honestly, having Big Bill with anybody really turns out to be a good one. Bill just knows how to work with people when it comes to tag teams, right? As we hit picture and picture number two on this match. Things are just flying along here tonight. I, I got a feeling we're going to get a little bit of overtime here tonight. With, uh, well, hell, it's 20 minutes too and we're not even done this match yet, so... And the Bucks are known to go a little bit overtime. And we did have Jericho out here, so automatically we get a little bit of overtime. But yeah, just a quick reminder as we uh, get going here. Oh, there's the ads. I'll, I'll wait till after the ads do dumb shilling. Yeah. I was just going to mention about how we're going to be here for uh, All In here. So make sure you're popping by and saying hello and... We're, we're just going to have a whole bunch of us here chatting wrestling here. I don't know how good or bad this is going to go, but it's definitely going to be interesting. To say the least. Just trying to get my uh, overlays all fixed up here so we can get four people on the screen at the same time. Maybe five. Like I said, it's just going to be a blast regardless. So what what happens there? It just um, yeah, and we're we're into a really big stretch of wrestling coming up here. Like three consecutive weeks, three consecutive PPV slash PLEs. We got uh, all in coming in on Sunday the twenty fifth, then we got Bash at Berlin on the thirty first, the Saturday. Which I got a feeling we're probably not going to get a. They might try to put. Well, Bash of Berlin's an afternoon show, so we should be okay for collision at night again. So. And then a week after that, we got all out, which remember, all out is going to be on the Saturday. We will not be here for collision on the Friday because I'll be actually be at. Uh, 
SmackDown as it is here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And I got a feeling it's going to be absolutely stacked because, well, frankly, it's up against Collision. Even though it really doesn't need to be stacked to beat the ratings that they are so desperate for compared to uh, Collision, but... But yeah, so just everything just turned out roses here. Um, as we get back from the commercial break once again, thank you everybody for uh, surviving the ads. If you don't like them, consider Twitch Turbo, or if you really like us here, consider a subscription. Just a few dollars a month helps out the channel quite a bit. Oh, well, here we go, pumping up the kicks. The custom buck kicks. Wonder if they're back in stock again. I'll be honest, I'd rather get the Tekken 8 or Tekken 8 Nikes than the Bucks Punk Reeboks. I've always been a Nike guy for my shoes. They just feel comfortable and Caster trying to get himself up. Maybe he stays down there. Oh, nice shot to the face. No more commercials for the last 20 minutes. Let's go. Definitely Nike for casual lately, but loving. All right. Hey, crowded. It's been a fun night of dynamite. We, I would say they're setting up for Wembley just nicely here. Right now, we're in the middle of the Bucks versus the Acclaim for the tag titles. Open the show with uh, Mercedes and uh, Hikaru Shida for the Wim for the TBS title. I uh, ended up uh, pretty much the way you would think it would. Camille interfering, costing Shida the match. Brick comes out as a extra surprise for Mercedes. Didn't expect it. Somewhat cliche if you have been watching. We had uh, Orange Cassidy qualify as number one for the uh, Casino Gauntlet uh, match coming up at, at Wembley. A little do si do, do si do, block the kick, swing around, over the cross, double. Everybody double down. Ooh, here we go. Yeah, we, we just. It, it's just been a solid night of wrestling all together here. Basically, we're going to get Big Bill versus Hook next week. Mariah May came out and uh, burned all her clothes. Yes, I'll say it that way. That way I can get ratings and they can get ratings. Um, you have to see it to understand it. Hangman Page, Jay Lethal, absolutely banger match right after the opening women's match. It looks like we're setting up towards uh, Jared and Hangman at Wembley, but... Bowens just get dropped there. Jesus. I will. Well, the one thing I want to say about this show is the promos that they've been doing, the pre packaged stuff. Absolutely out of the park in terms of the quality. Oh, ref bump. Great. Here comes Okada. 
Never mind. Don't need Okada. I just need a shot to the nuts. He's like, I ain't giving you no title. That a boy, Justin. Oh, and there's the DQ. Are you freaking kidding me? Well, this is how we get our three way now. Well, security, let's see if they're as good as they were with Jack Perry earlier. We actually got a disqualification AW. Sure you can blame Dax. Like why would you They had their title shot and they could have Oh. This is This is the way you set up a three-way but it just That's a real stupid ending. That's a real dumb ending. Ah, oh, Daniels. All right, well, shut my mouth here while we're still, we're still a little in between here, right? Because you got Bucks and Acclaim winner gets, or sorry, FTR and Acclaim winner gets Bucks. They'll end up, watch the Bucks actually show up on a Saturday for once and end up costing, uh, Costing a claim, costing a claim, making Daniels just have to call the triple threat, right? But yeah, it's at least it gives people a reason to come watch on Saturday, which I hope you all do do join us. All right, we've seen this promo a couple times. I I still enjoy him, but. I still have to deal with tradition here, folks. Our tradition here. All right. Uh, I got a little enthralled for a second there anyway. Just a quick uh, shout out here to let you guys know. Tonight, after we're done here, about a five minute break, we're going to get into week 12 of WWE 2K24 My GM mode. We are uh, on the road to fast lane. We got a rough week last week, but there was a reason for it. We got our big arena, so now we got the big venue. Now we can start making some cash and doing some deals and increasing the talent. And I got some good matches booked for tonight, so make sure you stick around. Tomorrow. Ah, the BCC history there. boy. Um gonna be around tomorrow we're gonna be doing some uh, big game hunting on tears of the kingdom gonna hit up some lionels uh 
We might even go for a frock. And if we get through that, we'll probably uh, maybe even start a descent into Ganondorf. I did pick up the barbarian armor. I'll explain more about it later, but I did pick up some armor that I want to upgrade, the barbarian armor. But to do that, I got to beat some Lionels. So maybe we'll have to uh, do some farming before we start. Start the big descent for the big finish. And then uh, we will be here on Friday. Think I might be doing Guilty Gear Strive or else we might. We'll, we'll see what happens here. It, it, it's a bit of a wild card on Friday. We're either going to get into some Guilty Gear, some Tekken, or maybe some MLB. More, more than likely, we'll be doing some Tekken as we're running into uh, the new season there. I still haven't had a chance to play since they put the new DLC characters in. And then Saturday, we'll be here with uh, AEW Collision and Week 13 of WWE 2K24 My GM Mode. So if you're not following, make sure you hit the follow button here. Russ, how the heck you doing here tonight, my friend? I hope the uh, makeup job on Instagram went well. I saw some early pictures there. Uh, for those that don't know, Rez was doing a uh, sub goal that uh, he would get his head shaved for part one and then part two was getting his wife to do makeup. So I, I don't have a wife here, so let's not even worry about that. So makeup went wild. A lot of pics on Discord. Yeah, I'm... I'll, I'll check those out after I'm done streaming here. I hope you're doing great. Tonight, tonight's been a lot of fun hanging out with everybody here. And I, I love that you got Machine Head rocking up, rocking in the stadium right before the main event here. No, I'm. Things are going well. Everybody's, everybody's been having a lot of fun tonight. And yeah, you're back on tomorrow with some MLB The Show, right? Tomorrow afternoon, as usual, or are you... Alright, sounds good, sir. Well, yeah, we're, get, we're getting ready for our main event here and Wheeler Yuta coming out. It's actually amazing we get to hear Wheeler Yuta's music. Do yourself a favor, guys. I know a few of you are MLB The Show fans in here in chat. Go check out Rez's streams. Every, give him a follow. It'll be, it's a lot of fun to uh, to join Rez's stream here, and he's got a lot of interesting things going on there. So, Anyway, got to get ready for the dance here. Nana's out there with the coffee and a new hoodie. And I swerve when I drive, and I swerve when I drive, and I gotta be a healer cause I gotta be the wheeler. And I gotta go hoo-ha cause I gotta beat Utah. Nailed it. Word to your mother. <laughs> If you're brand new here and you just seen this, you're like, it's just a tradition. If you check out the intro, it, it'll make sense to you. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, I, great to see the champ come out here. This is going to, like, there's so many good storylines going into this match, even though it's sort of the match we didn't expect for the main event of All In. But... If you guys listen to Sean Ross Sapp, apparently the match that we thought we were going to get, we're going to get two weeks later. Apparently, uh, we got Swerve and Hangman tentatively booked for All In in Chicago on the 7th. So, we'll have to see what happens. Like, there are many ways to do this, and this is the one promotion that will... Everybody has that retirement angle or that will never challenge again angle and they actually follow it.
Wheeler, you gotta be lighter on your feet, my friend. Swerve is just unloading everything. Like, we know that Danielson has to be protected a little bit. His neck is not where it used to be. Not even close. No, when it comes to Strickland here, like, he is making this a feud. And he, he's putting on these matches in the ring that are just absolutely insane all the time. And let's face it, Danielson can't. So if Danielson ends up winning, he's not going to be the same full-time champ that we've seen on our TVs, right? Like everybody's been complaining about the part-time champ. We are going to get a part-time champ out of Danielson if he wins. Even though the schedule is pretty busy for September. Well, last year they didn't have uh, the World Championship at All Out. If you don't remember, that was the... Uh, I honestly never heard that critique about the world's world champion on the graphic. Because it is a world championship being defended around the world. I'll, I'll be honest, I don't listen a whole lot to Bully Ray's critiques. One one thing I, I, I think constantly when it comes to stuff like that, it, it, it deals with a lot of wrestlers, it deals with a lot of promoters, it deals with a lot of... Uh, people involved in wrestling for what 30 40 50 years in uh, in North America wrestling was considered to be one style one way one one thing to go And now we're starting to learn some different uh, different ways of doing stuff, right? I see here. All right. I I did a quick tour of uh, the graphic thing that he mentioned there. Thank you, Ed, for bringing it up because it gives me a chance to take a look real quick. While I do see what he's talking about, if you watch the product, when it comes to AEW... Nine times out of ten, title matches take precedence over non-title matches, for one. Number two, does AEW have a very established number one guy? Some people might say that's MJF. Some people might say that's Swerve Strickland. I think there's enough people here to say that there's not enough number ones... Or sorry, that there's enough people to assume that they're number one, that there isn't a number one. At the top of the card, you're showing that two of your top titles. And here's here's one where I'll take a little bit of a 
comment about that. We were talking about this off the top of the show, too. With the fact that Mercedes opened the show with her match against Carl Shida. One of the biggest critiques that Bully Ray has had is the fact that he's that the opening match... The opening match is always the top match of the card. Well, Tony, if using his logic, the top match of the card tonight was Hikaru Shida and Mercedes Monet, which was put on top of the card. So, while he he's, he says that the world champion shouldn't be put lower on the poster, the main event was put on the top of the card. So there, there's my thought on that. You gotta, you can't pick which rules you want to pick just to. Uh, you think it's because the brick controversy? No, I think it's because, I, I think Mercedes has enough star power that they want to get her out there first. You get that match in, like the first thing that people's eyeballs see when they change channels. If they see Mercedes, they see Shaz, casual fans see Sasha Banks on their TV. And that might help them stick around. We'd have to take more look, take a look at the more organized numbers once they come out on Friday. Which I really don't look at the numbers to begin with. But it would be interesting to see if the numbers changed a lot with the fact that Mercedes was the opening match versus an MJF match. I think she's either first or last right now. Yeah, that, that very well could be the case. But at the same point, why wouldn't you want to head on, show off your show? You, you you show show her off as your biggest thing on the show right off the bat. In terms of talking points for the show tonight... Frankly, you're going to get the tag title match, which I was on the top of the poster. That's going to be one of your biggest talking points on the show. I'm assuming the face-off between Swerve and Danielson will be okay at the end of this. And I think the fact that Britt returned to face Mercedes was probably your other big talking point tonight. There isn't a lot of talking points per se just a lot of great matches well that was unique an uppercut headbutt that's like take out your chin right now and let's just break it into four pieces but I totally see what you're saying KJ the, the fact that you're looking you're looking at the possibility of having Mercedes be the opening match if she's on the card. The only thing that makes it rough is the fact there's no other women's match on the card after that. Let's hope it changes, and I think it will after the pay-per-view. Because here's the other thing a lot of people aren't talking about. What if? What if the new contract includes... A third hour every every week. What if Dynamite goes for three hours? Well, let's face it, they have the roster to fill the spots. We've said that enough times that... All right, well, Swerve gets the win by knockout.
You notice it's not 80,000 this time? You can thank Taylor Swift for that. This is getting... Well... How selfish of Daniel said did not throw in the towel. For he wasn't at ringside. He was outside. Well, we got our heel for the match. No, uh, Danielson was outside the ring apron for it, so he couldn't do that. These fans are so fickle. No excuse. <laughs> As we fade to black on this. Yeah, when it comes to AEW, I think the biggest thing is the matches, not the, not exactly the one talents. Like our main events were. Oh, they okay. So sorry, TSN's got a weird. We're skipping ahead stuff here. Um, but yeah, going off the. Back it up three seconds here. The reason I said Taylor Swift, for those that don't know, Taylor Swift is running Wembley Stadium. I do believe it starts on Wednesday. And I think she's running a week of shows there. And uh, AEW is allowed to come in on the Sunday, but can't touch any of her stuff. So essentially 30,000 seats of Wembley Stadium are not allowed to be used because they have the Taylor Swift set up there. Two things out of this. One, that sucks. Two, Tony Khan, if he's smart, is going to get a box. And even if Taylor's there for like five minutes, get her in there, have a picture of her there, and watch the internet just lose their mind because the Travis Kelsey effect will just, you know, all, all the WWE fan, fans will be somewhat on fire and not in a good way. As uh, tribalism will be at its all-time finest there. I, I'm waiting for that moment. Do you know the moment that they had it all in with Mercedes in the stands? I want to see that with Taylor Swift. And if we can get that, that would be just like, mm, chef's kiss from Tony Khan here. So. But all in all tonight, I, I think uh, we, we had a pretty good show here. Uh, once again, Mercedes and Sheeta pretty much did what they had to do here. Sheeta showed that she belonged. Uh, until Camille decided to get her foot involved. Granted, it was after Sheeta hit her with like three kendo shots. But, uh, and then we got Hangman Page and Jay Lethal just starting from the back, brawling out. Hangman gets the victory there. I I, I think we're going to get Jared and, and Hangman at Wembley. I really think we should. Just for the work that Jared's put in, he deserves it. Rather than on the pre-show. And then uh, we had the three-way for the number one spot in the gauntlet, which we can uh, we can debate how smart it is to actually have it as that spot later. But Orange Cassidy gets that win, so he gets the number one spot, so they get the pop for his entrance. I, I can see that's why they do that there. Uh, we end up getting the uh, tag match here, which... Great match. It's two of the three best teams in uh, AEW right now in terms of two-man teams showing off what they can do right now. And I'm not talk I'm not including teams that are involved in the trios right now. So that's a different different story right there, but that ending with Dax just taking out uh 
Matthew and causing the disqualification just it, it seemed like a bit of a BS ending to me in terms of what we did there. Uh, we found out we're getting we're getting the face to face with uh, Claudio and uh, Okada with the fact that they're going to be facing off in Cardiff next Wednesday, which it's going to suck because it's a, I'd assume it's a pre tape show. And they're going to be showing it live later in uh, in North America at their regular time. Unless they're going to have like a two... I don't know what the time change is there, but I'm pretty sure it's... That's two in the morning, so I don't think they're going to be doing it then. And then, uh, then we got our main event. Basically establishing Swerve back into the full heel role for this main event against Danielson. Well, some people will never give uh, Swerve the heel treatment. And he didn't go through the heel tunnel or anything. But at, at the end, after he ended up uh, basically making uh, the referee call the match due to failure to continue on Wheeler Yuta, and then hitting that uh, house call on Danielson after the promo was done, we pretty much has, have established who our face and heel are going into this match. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this is going to turn out now that. Sorry about that. Now that these, uh, now that there's an established face and established heel. Prefer a heel swerve. Yeah. Like I, I prefer a focus swerve and a face swerve. A face swerve always has hints of being a heel in it. And Swerve being a just pure out heel right now, I think might be the better cause for him here. And it all, it sets up an interesting dynamic. Like we were mentioning this during the match that there is a, Sean Ross Sapp is reporting that preliminary talks are having uh, Hangman and and Swerve it all, all out in Chicago. And Hangman believing that he's a that he's a face and swerve acting like as a heel that is a very interesting dichotomy of this and everything could be instantly switched back i know but at the same time that vibe that you're going from one way and just trying to naturally switch it to the other it almost feels like you're not going to be able to do it so i i know chicago wrestling fans are very smart about stuff but at the same time, this could be a very interesting, very interesting set of circumstances coming up here. So, but for the last dynamite in North America before they head over to Cardiff for All In next week, I, I feel that they did a lot of cleaning up and a lot of setting up and getting our, getting themselves ready for the for the uh, PPV. You know, well, essentially we're getting the pre-show next Wednesday, followed by a pre-show earlier before the show on Sunday and then the main show. But either way, I, I think we're smoothly getting into line here. So. 